Greetings everyone, I'm Priyansh and today I'm going to talk on how climate change affects the cardiovascular health of our society. To begin with, I'd like to take you back in time to revisit one experience that deeply impacted me. Back in 11th grade, when I was preparing for my entrance exam, I used to spend all my days at the coaching classes. I used to wake up at around 8 or 9 am, get ready, have my breakfast, quickly grab my lunch and reach my classes at around 10 or 11 am, only to return by 6 to 8 pm. Somehow I used to love this routine because it kept me extremely occupied. But unfortunately, I didn't get enough time to spend with my friends or family. One evening when I had just returned back from my classes at around 8 pm, I heard a cry for help from my uncle as something had happened to my grandfather. Me and my parents quickly rushed to my grandfather's room to see him lying on the floor of the washroom. We were shook, but we quickly took action. I started CPR and my parents called the ambulance. And as soon as the ambulance arrived, we rushed him to the hospital. But unfortunately, it was too late and the doctors couldn't save him. The cardiologist explained that there was a blockage in two of the arteries of his heart, which has resulted in his death. And this was just one year after my grandmother had succumbed to a sudden cardiac arrest. Sometimes we feel so powerless when despite all our efforts, we're not able to do anything. I'd like to take a moment and ask everyone to pause. Everyone, please close your eyes and think of people who have died due to cardiovascular diseases, be it your friends, your family, or someone you saw on TV, and maybe someone you were following. I'm sure you would have thought of at least one person. Yes, that's how common cardiovascular diseases are. It is the most common disease across the world. Every year, over 17.9 million people lose their lives due to cardiovascular diseases. This makes up almost 32% of all the deaths. And to add some more clarity to this figure, we can say that every third person on this planet dies because of a cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, the number of these deaths are much more in lower and middle income countries like that of ours in India. In the past five years during my training at MBBS, I've experienced several such casualties. And along with my clinical experience and my public health work, right from implementing, executing, and designing national public health campaigns to organizing the pre-World Health Assembly at WHO Geneva, I have understood that the root cause of these chronic diseases is much more deeper and much more complex than we can imagine. To answer these complex questions, we will look at four simple questions. What are cardiovascular diseases? What are their risk factors? Why is climate change an important risk factor? And how does climate change affect the cardiovascular health of the society? To begin with, we'll understand what are cardiovascular diseases. Cardio means heart and vascular means blood vessels which are veins and arteries that carry blood to all parts of your body. Ischemic heart disease, which is often referred as heart attack, is the most common cause of cardiac death. Here, the blood supply to the heart is compromised. And stroke is a condition wherein the blood supply to the brain is compromised. It is the most common vascular cause of death. And both of these conditions together make up almost 85% of all the cardiovascular diseases. Moving on to the second question, what are the risk factors? When we talk about this, some risk factors would pop in your head right away, like high blood pressure, high blood glucose, alcohol, tobacco, low physical exertion, high BMI or body mass index. But we often miss out some of the most important risk factors. We miss out on aspects of climate change, like air pollution and non-optimal temperature. I would like you to have a look at this graph and see the most expected risk factors like high blood pressure and dietary risks are right at the top. But I would like to draw your attention to air pollution, which causes more deaths 
than high BMI and tobacco. And now moving on to non-optimal temperature, you can see that it causes more deaths compared to low physical exertion and alcohol. That's shocking, right? But now you will question that these aspects of climate change are not the major risk factors. Then why should we pay so much attention to these risk factors? With this, we will now head on to the third question, that why is climate change an important risk factor? To answer this question, we will have to look at this situation from a closer perspective. If you have a look at this graph, you will observe that all of these risk factors are individual risk factors, but only the aspects of climate change are community level risk factors, which are not affected by an individual's action, but affected by the actions of the community. So even if there is a person who is taking care of his lifestyle, eating healthy and maintaining his blood sugar and blood pressure as well, he is still at risk to cardiovascular diseases because of these aspects of climate change. Air pollution is one of the most important risk factors in this area. In 2014, WHO identified air pollution as the single largest environmental risk. Ambient or outdoor air pollution in cities as well as rural areas results in over 7 million premature deaths across the world. And 54% of these deaths are caused due to cardiovascular diseases. Now I'd like all of you to have a look at this graph. On one side, you can see the environmental risk factor, that is air pollution related cardiovascular deaths. The number is a staggering 3.78 million deaths per year. And on the other side, you can have a look at some of the common disease conditions like HIV, tuberculosis and suicides. With this, you can compare all of the deaths caused by these disease conditions. The idea behind this graph is to understand the magnanimity of air pollution related cardiovascular deaths. But now you might think that I live in a clean city, air pollution might not affect me as much. But let me bust that myth. In 2019, 99% of the people were living in places which did not meet the air quality guidelines set by WHO. 99% of the people. Now, if you have a look at this graph, you will observe that the quality of air is not homogeneous across the world. India has one of the worst air quality indexes in the world, and Delhi is the most polluted city in the world. Mumbai and Kolkata have also made their way to the list of top 10 most polluted cities. Now, shifting from the heterogeneity of air quality among countries to the heterogeneity at a local level. Studies have identified that the quality of air differs from location to location in a single city as well. One particular study identified the hazardous effects of living in proximity to a major roadway. It identified that every 100 meter you move away from a major roadway, the risk of sudden cardiac arrest decreases by 6%. Despite of all of these hazardous implications of air pollution, why haven't we heard from our cardiologists that this person probably died due to air pollution? To answer this question, we will have to take a look at this situation from the lens of a public health specialist. Imagine a box full of lab mice. Some mice don't eat healthy, some mice are lazy, and a few are addicted to drugs. But all of these mice are packed in a box full of polluted air. Yes, you connected the dots right. The box is our planet Earth, and we are the lab mice. Just to give a few numbers to this experiment, I'd like to mention the results of one particular study, which stated that cocaine increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases by 24 times, whereas air pollution just increases the risk by 1.05 times. But this is at an individual level. When we move on to the population level, cardiovascular disease deaths are just 0.5% because of cocaine, but they are a staggering 5.5% due to air pollution. The difference here is the exposure. Along with air pollution, tobacco smoking, forest fires, non-optimal temperature, heavy metals like lead and arsenic are also aspects of climate change which are affecting our cardiovascular health. With this, we will now head on to the fourth question. 
how does climate change affect the cardiovascular health of our society? To answer this question, we will look at an overtly simplified model, wherein blood vessels are analogous to lead pipes, and our entire circulatory system is analogous to the plumbing system of a house. To understand the impact of climate change on cardiovascular health, we will look at its three mechanisms. The first mechanism is reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress and inflammation. Imagine a person breathing polluted air. The polluted air has suspended particulate matter. When these particles land on the surface of your lungs, they cause irritation. This irritation further leads to inflammation and release of reactive oxygen species and free radicals. They damage our lung parenchyma and also cause multiple further reactions. Now analogous to this is a lead pipe which is exposed to sunlight and other environmental hazards. This leads to corrosion of the pipe and cracks and crevices appearing on this pipe which further leads to a leaky pipe. The second mechanism is platelet aggregation and coagulation. Platelets are small blood cells in our blood which help in clotting our blood. This is analogous to a lead pipe which has hard water running inside. This hard water often leaves behind residue which leads to clogging of the pipe and diminishes the water supply. The final mechanism is dysfunction of the autonomous nervous system. It has two parts, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system, you might have heard the fright, flight and fight response system. Well, this system responds to the stressors that I've mentioned earlier and activates the sympathetic chain and this results in a havoc. This is similar to the head of your family reacting to a problematic plumbing supply. Your mother stresses about the plumbing problem present and asks your dad to fix this plumbing problem. And well, your dad tries, but this only gives you an excuse not to take a bath for the next couple of days because the plumbing system is done for good. Fortunately, we can fix or replace this plumbing system. But unfortunately, we cannot revive people who've lost their lives due to clogged arteries. So how do we overcome this chaos? We have to fix the cause. We have to fix the hard water problem. And on these similar lines, we started advocating for improving the cardiovascular health of our society. I started the World Youth Heart Federation one and a half years before with an aim to mobilize young individuals from diverse backgrounds and multiple professions, united by a common goal of improving cardiovascular health. We have five working committees which goes with the acronym of HEART, Health Education, Entrepreneurship, Advocacy, Research and Technology. During the pandemic, we had to divert all our attention towards COVID relief because of major misallocation of resources. During this time, we were able to impact 4 lakh individuals across all states of India. Out of these 4 lakh individuals, one story is very close to my heart. There was a primary health care centre in a distant village, which had almost 20 patients admitted on a daily average, but they did not have a single pulse oximeter. After the second wave, all of us must be knowing the importance of a pulse oximeter. We were able to manage delivering five pulse oximeters to this distant village's primary health centre. And this changed the treatment course of all the patients there. One of the patients who got discharged inquired about these pulse oximeters and along with his friends from the village, he gave all of their savings to our organisation as a donation so that we could help other people across India who might be suffering from similar problems. Now, as a pulse oximeter is important in treating COVID patients, ECG machines are important for treating cardiovascular diseases. We are currently working on a project called Project Cardiogram, wherein cardio stands for heart and gram refers to village in Hindi, wherein we are deploying digital ECG machines in rural areas to strengthen our rural healthcare system. We are currently in the process of deploying 52 ECG machines, 
which will give access to over 1.29 million individuals in rural areas. Along with the deployment, we have also worked on a structural framework wherein we work on screening patients for early risk factors and also have a smooth referral system established which helps patients with acute heart conditions seek treatment on time. To conclude, I'd like to mention that all of these efforts that we've been making are to fix the gaps of our current healthcare system in order to make it sustainable. But we have to fix the cause. We have to fix the hard water and the sunlight problem. We have to address climate change. I'd like to tell you that climate change is not just a polar bear stranded on an ice cap or the depleting Amazonian forests or the rising sea levels. It is much more complex than that. And it is affecting our day-to-day -day lives and our health to a much greater extent than we can imagine. So I'd like to ask you that the next time you talk about climate change or advocate about saving the environment, you must involve health and especially the detrimental effects of climate change on cardiovascular health in it. Thank you.